yeah hi good evening one and all uh, i hope i can sense the tense and the aspirants as the date of need is out and the exam was pre-pondered 21 days compared to the last year exam date so okay it's now time uh, that we need to run fast and try to cover as much as stuff as possible in smarter way and i hope uh, the mds conquer team is a plan in a very better way to enhance the preparation we come out with the best schedule we come out with the best question papers we'll be planning to post more than uh, 100 videos in this last 90 days so that's what the plan of action is so we'll be providing more and best and refined work for you okay let's work hard both you and from our team so both will will together work hard to make a decent end at the end okay so the date of examination is December 14, 2018, and I hope you guys will definitely do it well. So now I'm will, I'll be covering a few important things which are very important in examination point of view, which were covered as in recent 2017-18 NEET examination uh, topics, uh, which are very, very important. Okay, uh, let's go in detail. I'll be covering dental and autodental histology related things. So this is uh, an area where I have seen multiple questions and of course it is taken from 14th edition of Orpons. Okay, the latest, latest one and uh, I don't know why the papers are allowed to give this memory based stuff. The first evidence of calcification of both primary and permanent, they are very important. Make a note, make an order. And the crown completion dates of primary and permanent as well as eruption sequence as well as the eruption dates of all primary and permanent teeth. I have seen many, many questions in 2017 as well as in 2018 related to this chart. Make a note, the root and completion. There is a slight correlation between the eruption and root and completion, but of course, I want you guys to make the root and completion of at least maxillary anteriors and mandibular anteriors. They're very important. Okay, done, clear. I'll be going further. So of course I have seen many questions related to this particular table. That's the difference between the parotid, submandibular, as well as sublingua. The questions are the development. Okay, initial development starts at four to six weeks in parotid, six weeks in submandibular, and eight to twelve weeks in sublingua. And the type of secretion is purely serous in the case of parotid, mixed, which is predominantly serous in the case of submandibular, mixed, which is predominantly mucous in the case of sublingual, and flow rates are important. Please make a note. And I have seen questions related to the MLS activity that is maximum in the case of parotid and lysosome activity that is maximum in the case of submandibular and of course many questions related to the openings of these salivary ducts landmarks as well as the name of the duct that is associated with the each gland. Of course a known thing is pseudocapsule where a well-defined thick pseudocapsule is present which is a peculiar feature of the parotid. So of course apart from this please make a note that the Parotid gland is the only gland that derives from the ectoderm. Okay, it is an ectodermal derivative. Apart from this, there are many other glands in the body that derive from the ectoderm. They are the mammary glands and the pituitary glands and parotid gland. They derive from the ectoderm. Make a note about this important statement that the mechal cartilage disappears at 24th week of intrauterine life. And of course, these are very important in our general anode. That is the nerve supply of the gland, blood supply of the gland and the lymphatic drainage of the gland. I'll be moving further. So this is the classification of the capillaries that are present in the bodies. The body capillaries can be categorized into one, two, three, four, basing upon the semi-permeability of these capillaries. The type one is called as a fenestration capsule. Type two is a continuous, which is a non-fenestrated, and type three is a discontinuous capsule, and type four is a capsule that is associated with the tight junction. And the question in your exam is about the capillaries that are present in the pulp type 1 and type 2 capillaries are present in the pulp one important point and majority of the metabolites that are present in the pulp are transferred by these fenestration capsules which is also called as a type 1 capsules is 2018 need question make a note about this chart slide which is very very important so going further i'll be dealing about the layers that are present in the pulp just go with the order the dentin that is present very near to the pulp is called as a pre-dentin and the first layer is called as an odontoblastic layer, second is called as a cell-free, third is called as a cell-rich and fourth is called as a pulp core. Just remember the order, we go further. So odontoblastic layer is the layer that is present to the periphery, zone of free, cell-free zone is called as a zone of villi, cell-rich zone which is zone having higher density and pulp core is present at the center. Okay, hope 
if you know majority of the questions okay i'll be just moving to the further so again i have seen many questions related to the regenerative triad or pulp regeneration triad which can be called as a tissue engineering triad this tissue engineering triad all these consisting of a triad of three important components they are the scaffolds scaffolds are nothing but which forms the skeleton second one are the cells cells are nothing but stem cells and third one are signaling molecules which are nothing but growth factors all these combinedly the result over a period of time to form a regenerative tissue or a regenerative organ which is called as a pulp regeneration so basically i have seen many questions on the stem cells and the names and the full forms i have seen a question called as what is a full form of dpsc that is nothing but dental pulp stem cells which are originated from the pulp of the permanent teeth what is shed that is stem cells of human exfoliated teeth what is idps that is immune dental stem cells which are taken from the primary teeth pdlsc the periodontal ligament stem cells scap that is stem cells from the apical papilla dfpc that is dental follicle progenitor cells but i hope it's very clear and simple so going further detail of these three important points are self explanatory just go with them i have seen many questions related to the age changes also called as a regressive changes in the pulp which can be morphological and physiological changes as the go as the days increases as the age increases there will be decreasing the pulp volume there will be increasing in the dystrophic calcifications of the pulp stones there will be decreasing the number of pulp cells there will be degeneration and the loss of myelin sheet and and myelin nerves reduction in the number of blood vessels and of course exception is collagen fibril numbers increases as age increases coming to the physiological changes the there will be reduction in the ability of a pulp to react to the irritants and the repair means uh, regenerative capacity of the pulp decreases or the formation of reparative dentin or tertiary dentin capacity of the pulp decreases as age increases so that's the reason why generally the vital pulp cap therapies or the pulp cappings or the pulp regeneration procedures we generally go in young individuals we don't prefer in the old individuals and the reason is the physiological activity of pulp decreases as age increases so identify this this is the question that is cusp of carabelle that's nothing okay cusp of carabelle is the fifth one in the smallest cusp where the pulp horn is absent so maxillary first molar you have five cap five cusps whereas only four pulp horns and the location of cusp of carabelle is again important it is lingual to the mesolingual cusp of the maxillary first molar and of course it is seen in the 60 percentage of individuals all these are four or five important points which are frequently asked in your examinations and i have seen a question related to the triangular ridges and transverse ridges a simple definition of triangular ridge is a ridge that descends from the tip of the cusps of the molars and the premolars towards the central part or the central force of the occlusal surface whereas transverse ridge is a combination or a union of two triangular ridges which is present on the buccal as well as the lingual surface so i have seen many questions related to the gingival genet gingival genet is a decent important landmark that is present in the smile designing as well as in the cosmetic periodontal surgeries so gingival genet is nothing but the definition they have asked the definition of gingival genet the most epical part in the gingival contour this is a gingival contour the most epical part in the gingival contour is called as the gingival genet this is the most epical part this is the most epical part this red one is the most epical part the most epical part in the gingival contour is called as the gingival genet is a neat 2017 mcq i've seen a sex determination forensic odontology dental histology question in 2017 neat which of the following gene that is present in the tooth helps in identifying the sex of an individual in a mass disaster the answer is m a m e l a m e l is a major matrix protein gene that is associated with the enamel so the peculiar feature of this gene is it is located both on x chromosome and y chromosome and represents itself in a different way so thus females you know that they have two x chromosomes so they two are identical because they are present on x chromosomes but male they have two unidentical or non identical because they are present on different chromosomes that is x and y so this particular gene helps in identifying the sex of an individual after mass disaster you know that even enamel is a hard structure that helps in identifying the sex of an individual so you can go with the basic points yeah that's all for today thank you signing off dr shrikant mds conquer please guys it is the time where you need to react fast like a young pulp not a old pulp because old pulp does not react and now it, the better stimulus of notification of need is out and i feel like this is a good stimulus for your pulp for you to
react in a better way and respond in a better way. All the best. Happy learning with MBS Compass signing off.